I have been wanting a perfume from the house of Guerlain for a long time now. And as luck would have it, I managed to pick up not one, but eight perfumes that I would love to share with you. Hello everyone, I'm Bevy and welcome to Bevy Scents. Now, as luck would have it, I went to the department store. I hadn't been there in a really long time, parked in the courier zone, which is 15 minutes only. The store was closing in about 15 minutes and I wanted to try and sniff as many fragrances as possible, but that wasn't really working out for me. By the time I got to the girl encounter, I just happened to ask the SA if she had any gift sets and there was nothing out on display. And she goes to one of the drawers and says, hold on a minute, let me check. And I happened to get the absolute last box, the last gift set in the whole place. And so here is the perfumer's gift set from Guerlain. Now I wrapped it with my own bow just so we could have a little fun opening it. I hope you don't mind because I was quite impressed. There she is, eight bottles. This is my idea. Of heaven. Now, here is the perfumer set from the L'Arte et la Matière collection. There are eight perfume bottles, minis. Each one is 10 mils. And I'm going to give you my first impressions starting with the front row. I've reorganized this tray for simplicity's sake. These fragrances spoke to me immediately. They were warm, rich, inviting, had real distinct personalities and really worked with my chemistry. So we're going to start with Angelique Noir. Angelique Noir is an amber floral fragrance, and like all of these minis, it comes in an eau de parfum concentration. This fragrance is warm, it's rich, and it's linear. It smells the same from start to finish. There are no changes. And this is beast mode. This lasted about 20 for hours on my skin. You definitely get your money's worth and a little goes a long way. Now, having said that, this has a particular note of angelica in it. It is in the top and it's in the base. In the base, you have the angelica, the cedar, and vanilla. It is a very pleasant scent. However, you have to like that angelica note and you have to like your fragrances to last that long. I had to wash the bedding, my clothes, my hair. It's a five stage clinger. I wore it for New Year's Eve, so it is now my Christmas scent. I don't think this is the kind of fragrance that you can wear every day. It's more like an occasional fragrance. And for me, it just, has Christmas. I don't know what it is about that Angelica. I don't really have any other perfumes that have that note in it, but it's so distinct. And after living with it for 24 hours, we're good friends. You have to try this out first because it's a very unique scent in that respect. Next up, we have Queer Beluga. Queer Beluga. Now, this is a leather fragrance. Mmm. Normally, I would pass over this. I don't believe that I 
like leather scents and this I would have missed out. The name does not do it justice. This has vanilla, suede, heliotrope, and it is elegant. It is oh, refined. It smells like money. It is so classy. Uh, yeah, this could very easily replace my Lo Ombre by Prada that got discontinued. I mean, wow. This was a big surprise and I would have passed it over because I would have said, mm, it's a leather scent. I don't like leather. Forget it. And I would have missed out. This is amazing. So rich, warm, elegant, absolutely. I really love this one. Next is Neroli Outre Noir. Neroli Outre Noir is a citrus aromatic. Now, this fragrance, once again, a surprise. Oh, I really like this one. It is a freshie. This is fresh, elegant. I mean, surprising. Like, it has myrrh, vanilla, oak moss, benzoin. I mean, these are notes that I really like, so I should like this, but I probably would have never picked this up. It also has tea in it and smokiness and grapefruit. I mean, oof, there's so much going on in here and it just comes together so beautifully and it is refreshing, but in a new way for me. It is perfect for the summertime. I don't have anything like it and I love it. Next up, three fragrances with the name Rose in the title. So you might think that they are rose fragrances and you might be surprised. First up is going to be Rose Barbar. Rose Barbar is a Chypre floral fragrance. Now, do not let the name Rose in there fool you. This is probably one of the most masculine leaning uh, perfumes in the entire set. This has notes of honey, patchouli, and woody notes in the base. This is mostly a woody fragrance, but it's very unusual because refined, elegant, and Ooh, sexy are not the words I would use to describe this. I would, strangely enough, have to say that this is a rough fragrance. I mean, I picture men in the wild, wild west settling the new frontier wearing this. It is not your typical fragrance and I would much rather smell this on a man than a woman and even still I find it hard to wear. Next one. Rose Sherry. Now this fragrance is a floral fragrance. Not your typical rose by any stretch of the imagination. She is extremely unique to my nose. Um, I've never really encountered anything like her. If you told me that a mixologist or bartender, someone who specializes in mixing beverages, made this, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. It's like the sweetest rose tea. 
that you ever had and imagine spraying that all over yourself. To me, this would be just absolutely amazing for the summertime. I've never had anything like this. I look forward to trying this in the summertime. I think it's going to be amazing. And a lot of people really like this one. All of these I recommend that you give them a try, test them out first. Uh, I really like this one. It was a little bit of a surprise and I'm here for it. I really like that. Next up, we have Santal Peorosa. Now this perfume is a woody fragrance. It has notes of sandalwood and agarwood. Agarwood is like the French take on oud. This has a very piercing, pungent, woody signature. It's very distinct in the same way that teak and cedar are very distinct. It is commanding. It's strong. It leans very masculine to my nose. I found it challenging to wear and as soon as I put it on, I said I would rather smell this on a guy and even still, I think it's more of a work kind of scent, maybe an event, I don't know, but I would never say that this is sexy, but that's just me. Uh, a lot of people really like this. It has a really beautiful wood signature. It's the kind of fragrance that you kind of have to respect because it's just so beautifully put together, but challenging for me to wear. Now the last two fragrances have something in common. Let's start with Cruel Gardenia. I'm pronouncing it in English. This is a floral fragrance and it has a vintage vibe to it. It just, whoo, it hits you right off the top. It's real hard to find the gardenia. I'm so overwhelmed by those vintage notes. And then after about two minutes, it literally disappears. It does come back like a half an hour later and amp up, but wow, that vintage vibe just does not leave. You really have to like vintage style fragrances to enjoy this one. And maybe that's the cruel part of the name. That it's gardenia, but you can hardly find the gardenia. The next one is Spiritueuse Double Fenille. Now, everyone talks about this fragrance and a lot of people have it. But what they don't tell you is that it too has a vintage vibe right off the top. And that persists for about two thirds of the way through the life of this fragrance. Once again, you've got to love that. Once you get past that mark, it does die down to beautiful vanilla scent. Guerlain makes a beautiful vanilla. Now, if you can last that long through the vintage part of this fragrance, you're going to enjoy this fragrance's dry down. The vanilla is delicious. I love hearing from you guys. It keeps me going. There are days you just don't know when I'm like, wow, somebody says something encouraging or even acknowledges that they saw my video. I absolutely love it. If you think I'm a vibe, please subscribe. Bye.